The University of Arkansas has its first African-American chancellor, but 76 years ago, he wouldn't have even been able to attend the school he leads. Tonight, we take you back through time to share the UA's history with desegregation. For the first time since it was founded more than 150 years ago, a black man heads the University of Arkansas. I am the, the chancellor of the University of Arkansas, which is another expression of, of, of the university being very different than it was uh, in 1948. As noted in the Encyclopedia of Arkansas, 1948 was the year the U of A became the first public university in the Jim Crow South to desegregate. It was 1871 when the university was established as a land-grant institution. Chancellor Dr. Charles Robinson says it was started in part by a black man named Joseph Carter Corbin. When he signed that charter, it, we were in a period of American history called Reconstruction. So you had African Americans in positions of authority that you wouldn't have, say, 20, 30 years later. Among the first students to enroll? In the very first class, there was a James McGee who actually was an African-American who attended the University of Arkansas in, in 71, 72. His studies were cut short, though, due to the end of the Reconstruction era. He would be the last person of color to attend the university for more than seven decades. But after that, there was a movement away from allowing African-Americans to attend schools with whites, as it was throughout the entire South. Clifford Davis applied to the all-white university's School of Law in 1946. He was denied, then accepted after he reapplied in 1947, but Dr. Robinson says he instead went north to attend law school, concerned about the U of A's atmosphere. If you have to uh, petition to, to be or thre threaten to sue to be allowed into an institution, that does not suggest that it's likely to be a welcoming institution. The following year, a black man, whose name is now inscribed on the university's admissions building, began attending the law school. I mean, Silas Hunt was a trailblazer. Silas Hunt is known as a pioneer in the integration of higher education. It required courage to be the first African American to come to this campus to study on this campus. He had to have some sense that he would have to encounter significant degrees of loneliness, challenges, maybe direct challenges to his presence here. But he was willing to take that on and he did that and he laid the foundation for the six pioneers who were the, were the other African-American law students who followed him. Hunt, Jackie Shropshire, George Haley, Christopher Mercer, Wiley Branton, and George Howard Jr. make up the six pioneers. They attended from 1948 to 51, and five of the six were able to graduate. The only one to not receive a diploma was Hunt. The World War II veteran died in 1949 from tuberculosis. Even though the university had accepted them, there wasn't a full acceptance of their presence, of their whole being. Historian Dr. Karee Banton chairs the History Department and African and African American Studies at the University of Arkansas. There was segregation in town and in the university that a lot of the early students had to live in the black community because they couldn't live on campus. Dr. Banton describes the students' experience during that time as isolating. They didn't have access to the same education as their white classmates, forced to take separate classes in a basement office of the law school building. That does not exist on this campus now and in that way. If you want to be alone, you have to try to be alone. Things look a lot different on campus in 2024. I'm happy to call this place my alumni. Marquise Mullins, a Blytheville native, graduated in December 2023 with his bachelor's in social work. He acknowledges how former students like the six pioneers paved the way for him. They crawled so we could walk. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be where we are right now. Even 70 years after the desegregation of the university, Mullen says there's still a hesitancy among some in the African-American community to attend the predominantly white institution. But he's seen firsthand how the school is becoming more diverse. To be on that same playing field as any other person on this university and being able to have the same opportunities as everyone else has honestly been one of the greatest things I could have ever experienced. Nevertheless, the U of A is still having a difficult time attracting black Arkansans. We're a state of 17.4% African-Americans and we're still, we're struggling around 4.4% enrollment. The university is still fighting off the stigma of segregation from a different century. We have to continue to be vigilant to make sure that everyone knows 
that he or she has an opportunity to be successful on this campus. The first black chancellor, a testament to how far the school has come. As somebody who is pioneering, almost maybe in the vein of those who has come before him at the university in similar capacities, the university has much to learn from him. But for Dr. Robinson, the legacy he wants to leave behind goes far beyond the color of his skin. What I want is to leave here and know that I made a difference in just what we're talking about here, that students, regardless of their backgrounds, particularly poor students, have a greater sense of their equal opportunity on this campus.